the story of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. A story of enthrallment, innovation and passion. A story of bold inventors and intrepid pioneers in search of a better future. It's the story of people with vision and the courage to stray from well-trodden paths. People who were ahead of their time and refused to accept compromises. And it's a classic love story too. The story of our love for the car. foundations for the success of the S-Class were laid in the early 1950s when Mercedes-Benz introduced the new 220 model, known internally as the W187. Beneath the bonnet of this forefather of today's S-Class lay a newly designed six-cylinder engine with overhead camshaft. The car had a top speed of 140 kilometers per hour, impressive in its day, and featured duplex brakes on the front wheels. Even back then, these revealed our belief that safety is paramount. A belief that's reflected in every Mercedes-Benz car. Nach 15 Jahren Pause im Rennwagenbau. Großer Preis von Frankreich. 1954, a year of sporting triumphs. In motor racing, the Mercedes-Benz Formula One race car dominated every major circuit. At the wheel of the legendary Streamline W196, Carl Kling won the celebrated Arvos race and Juan Manuel Fangio was crowned world champion for the second time in a row. In the same year, the single joint swing axle of the W196 went into series production for the first time. Just one of many technical innovations which underwent a baptism of fire in the world of motor racing before being applied to the new six-cylinder 180 model series. It was also the first Mercedes-Benz luxury class saloon to feature a self-supporting body structure and, as such, marked the start of a new era in car manufacturing. From a purely technical point of view, every Mercedes-Benz saloon built since has featured a Ponton-style body. But the term Ponton Mercedes is exclusively reserved for this original model generation. Rock and roll ruled the dance floors in the late 50s. While in living rooms, the television was starting to take hold. And a ball-shaped satellite known as Sputnik began transmitting signals from space for the first time. Rocket propulsion played an important role at Mercedes-Benz in those days too. It was an idea which sparked off a new era in safety research. And during the early phases, there was an occasional tendency to overshoot the mark. Many of the research findings from this period were fed into the development of the model series 111, which began to roll off the production lines in 1959. The design of what we know today as the tail fin Mercedes was certainly eye-catching. But the really revolutionary thing about it was its rigid passenger cell with crumple zones front and rear patented by Bella Barini, the father of passive safety. He was also the man who came up with the idea of the padded dashboard in the tailfin Mercedes. On April the 12th, 1961, the world held its breath as a Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin circled the Earth in a space capsule, becoming the first man in space. The pioneering mood of the age was also in evidence at Mercedes-Benz with the new 300 SE, the top-of-the-line 112 tailfin model. A four-speed automatic transmission, a dual-circuit braking system, disc brakes front and rear, and for the first time, air suspension were all standard features of the plush 300 SE. As a free man, 
I say cried in the words, Ich bin ein Violina. The beginning of the 60s was a time of change all around the world. Also at the Unterturkheim plant in Stuttgart, where work was forging ahead on the legendary luxury class 108 and 109 model series. The sight of the 250S to 300 SEL models still makes the car fans' hearts race. The body, created by the French designer Paul Brack, marked a departure from everything that had gone before. This was the moment when the S-Class was born, even if it hadn't yet acquired its name. In 1968, there were demonstrations all over the world for a wide range of reasons. Mercedes-Benz was busy demonstrating how elegance and power could be combined on four wheels, air suspension, an automatic transmission, and an engine taken from the 600 model joined forces to optimum effect in the 300 SEL 6.3, the top-of-the-line 109 model. One small step for Mercedes-Benz to give its latest luxury class 116 model series the official title, the S-Class. But this model series represented a giant leap in terms of passive safety. Groundbreaking improvements, such as the crash-protected fuel tank and the enhanced passenger cell, marked out the S-Class saloons, which began to roll out of the Sindelfingen plant in 1972. Boxing legend Muhammad Ali was known as the greatest, even before his famous fight with George Foreman in Zaire. Afterwards, he became the greatest of all time. The greatest member of the S-Class family was the 450 SEL 6.9. With a displacement of almost seven liters, this spectacular model represented the pinnacle of the model series when it was launched in 1975. There was another groundbreaking invention that marked out the first generation S-Class too. It was the world's first passenger car to be available with the anti-lock braking system. Today, ABS is a standard part of almost every car manufacturer's repertoire. But in 1978, it was exclusively reserved for Mercedes-Benz S-Class customers. saw a lot of new trends come drifting over from the other side of the pond. But the 70s weren't even fully over when Mercedes-Benz showed the world where the S-Class was heading. Straight to the future. W126 was the internal designation for the latest milestone in car safety. This second generation was the first to survive the offset crash test at a speed of 55 kilometers per hour unscathed, making the S-Class one of the safest cars of its time. Mercedes-Benz underlined its pioneering role with the introduction of the brand new driver's airbag and the belt tensioner. There was no disputing the fact that the wind of change was blowing in the car industry. And elsewhere, too. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Berlin wird leben und die Mauer wird fallen. There was freedom for South Africa as well. Nelson Mandela was released from prison after over 27 years. He also drove an S-Class, 
A great car for a great man. The beginning of the 90s saw a very different revolution taking place. Cutting-edge microchips delivered ever-increasing speeds on the information highway. And on the real highway, this was an increasingly frequent sight. The opulent W140 represented the third generation of the S-Class and was the first series-produced car to feature a Mercedes star and a 12-cylinder engine. An armoured special protection version was used for many years by the former Chancellor of Germany, Helmut Kohl. Communication and keeping in contact were the buzz concept around this time. Mobiles got smaller and the internet got bigger and bigger. Welcome to the information age. The newly developed handling control systems on board the S-Class were designed to make optimum use of information. The Electronic Stability Program, ESP, and Brake Assist, BAS, turned the 140 model series into a, quote, giant who'd been taught to dance on the tips of his toes. When the model series finally went into retirement, the Frankfurter Allgemeiner remarked wistfully, some of us are missing the big guy already. In 1998, a German-American merger made history. Formula One driver Mika Häkkinen and his McLaren Mercedes revived the legend of the Silver Arrows and Mercedes-Benz presented the new 220 model series S-Class saloons. The standard specification model boasted over 30 innovations and 340 patented features. Including Airmatic, the newly developed air suspension system. The S-Class began the new millennium with Pre-Safe. A sophisticated system of sensors recognizes in fractions of a second that the car is heading for a collision and instantly triggers protective measures. Autumn 2005, the S-Class will celebrate its 54th birthday. And one thing we can promise is that it won't look its age. Mercedes-Benz's new 221 model series has given the S-Class a new face and shown the car world a taste of the future. The Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Be ahead. The new S-Class.